Um, I am presenting this talk with a couple of other colleagues. I have Emmy Tsang with me here and Mateus. Hi. Uh, so I'm here today to talk a bit about uh, metrics in research. Uh, and if I say science instead of research at any point, I apologize. It's an accident. I work in science, but I mean research. <laughs> so um, to talk about this and to talk about why research is um, associated with chaos or in, in any way, I'll talk about how science and how research actually use software. Uh, does anyone have any examples of software that is interesting research software maybe that you've heard in the news? No? Bioconductor? Bioconductor? I don't know if I've heard about that in the news, but... <laughs> I watch strange channels. <laughs> I, I would like to see this one. Okay, so um, here's one that maybe you did see. Uh, so many of you have probably seen the images of the black hole a few months ago. Um, and that was all open source software that was actually... Um, that did some exciting and amazing science. And I don't know why, but both of my examples are actually astrophysics and I work in biology. Um, so uh, have any of you ever downloaded and installed SETI at home where you give the, yeah, wow, that's amazing, me too. I haven't used it in ages, but I did it, like I remember 2001, downloaded it, donated all my spare processor cycles so that people could search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Once again, that is open source software. Uh, so how many of you have worked in research or science or still do? I've got fewer hands, but still maybe a third of the room, a quarter. Excellent. Okay. Right, so I will talk a bit more about metrics in research and tell you what sort of metrics research uh, tends to have because they are not the same metrics as software and sometimes they're not always that compatible. Uh, so some of the pressures that we have, I sort of said this slide before I came onto it, uh, is the paper. So I think this has been mentioned actually a couple of times already today, but as someone who works in a research organization, what I have to do is I have to write papers. Um, and if I do not write papers, I perish. Publish or perish, I think uh, Celia said earlier today. And I think also, Kevin, you mentioned that you've got to write papers and people measure you based on that. Um, and if you sort of think back to before the internet, I probably can't mention that in 10 years, but right now most of us remember what it was like before the internet. <laughs> um, so before the internet, we communicated via actual writing. We wrote in journals, we shared what we'd been doing in our experiments, in our science, in our research. Um, and that's still relevant in many ways today, so a lab experiment can still be written up in just the same way, but if you bring in software, it doesn't always fit in the way that you might think. Um, software is very different, and I'll explain some of the reasons why. Um, so one, apart from the fact that software isn't a paper and we have to write papers, we just do it. We end up writing this really nice story, so here was my problem, I wrote some software to solve it, the end, thank you very much, and that's how I get my credit as an academic. Um, then a question rises up, if I update my software, right, so I, I have a patch, I have a hotfix, I have a minor version, if the, the software is functionally the same, I've done hours and hours or weeks or months of work, but it's not enough to write a new paper on. Um, so how do I get credit for all this work? How do I tell my boss that I've been doing something worthwhile? Um, another problem is that you can tell a really nice story about your software and actually, at no point, show that software to anyone in the world. And it's like, well, what's the point? What am I actually getting credit for? My storytelling abilities? Um, and so it would be nice to fix this. And that quote is paraphrased, but it is 100% a genuine comment on a paper that I have co-authored, um, where they gave us a positive review and said, I've never tried this. I cannot try this. Well done. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of problems in terms of the way papers measure software. Um, and so another metric that science has is citations. You write your paper and then people write their own papers and they reference the papers that came before them. So here's the work that happened earlier um, and you are better if you have more citations. Um, and software, once again, it's not a traditional <coughs> research output so that means I may not get the citations that I need to justify my job and my time and my pay. Uh, so some people forget that they might need to, soft, to cite the software, some people don't know how to cite it. Um, some people, maybe they just ignore it. Um, and so we can fix that in some ways, like you might put a citation.md in your software repository. I would recommend that even if you are not an academic because it makes it easier for us to reference your software. Um, but still, it is a problem. How do I get citations as a software engineer? How do I play with the game that exists? Uh, so 
the, oh, ev even more, the journal that we publish our papers in, that again may, may affect the, that's, that's another metric. Is my journal good enough? Is it minor? Is it unexciting? So where I even publish my work actually affects the metrics that I get. And I think that most people who work in research software agree that these are not ideal and that there could be better things, but we don't necessarily have the power to get there. Um, and also, the next question is, so once we agree, what, I mean, this is a problem, um, how do we measure things in a way that is meaningful? Um, so I want to try and help you wake up a bit. I don't want to just talk at you. I know it's a warm room and we're a bit tired. Um, so in a minute, I will get us to do an activity. But one more metric I forgot to mention. Um, in the UK, we have something called the Research Ex Excellence Framework, because we want all of our research to be really excellent, which is incredibly vague. Um, and it doesn't actually sound all that good when you think about it. In terms of software as well, so software, uh, rather science or research, needs to be original. It needs to be significant, and it needs to be rigorous. So. I think we can agree what rigorous software is. We've got that one pinned down, so it might be tested, it might have versions, there's all sorts of things about rigorous software. We're happy with that one. Significant, uh, that can get a bit harder to define, but what about originality? So if I want original software, does that mean I need to write new software every time for it to be meaningful? What about maintaining packages? I, I feel that originality is actually counterproductive in terms of a software measurement because it makes it sound like throwing everything out every single time and writing new software is actually what is meaningful. I'm not convinced. So, uh, what can we measure? What can we find as a sweet spot? I think chaos has a lot of measurements that are very relevant to science, scientific software and to research software. Uh, I don't think everything is because a lot of it is corporate oriented. Um, so if you sit and you read through the chaos guidelines, um, I haven't seen the new ones that were announced this morning, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but a lot of the times the justifications for things will be like, the OSPO will think this. So we're thinking about justifying things to companies. Sometimes that is relevant, sometimes that's really useful, but I think that sometimes academia maybe, maybe can use other metrics. Um, so we're going to ask you a couple of questions, and rather than just talking for 20 minutes, I'm going to ask you all to talk to each other and share some ideas with us. Um, so to do that, uh, everyone stand up and stretch. Up, 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 wake up, stretch, stretch. Fantastic, thank you, we're awake. Right, turn to someone to your left or to your right, groups of two, three, four. Discuss these two things. One is, what chaos <laughs> metrics are useful? What chaos metrics are useful to science or to research? And if you're naive and you don't know, naive guesses are great. Outside viewpoints are amazing. And two, if you know of metrics that aren't chaosy, that might be interesting, suggest those as well. And Slido here, enter the code chaoscon2020 and just jot down your ideas really quickly, like a post-it note exercise, but where I don't have to type up the post-its afterwards. Um, and we will call you back when we have about five minutes left just to look at some of the ideas that you all have suggested onto Slido. Should we collectively do this on our phones? On your phones, on your laptops. Yeah, so if you have like in two zone four or fours, and then one of the people will so take out the laptop and type it in after you discuss. So one per team. Measure yeah. Measure yeah. Measure and then you will have two questions, yeah? So move forward after the first question. Uh, so yeah. around half time, so how much time do we have? So we have 12 minutes. <laughs> so like six minutes from now, switch to the next question, more or less. So that, and then, we'll, yeah, we'll have five minutes. After. All right, it's too quiet now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I woke up this morning and something was like going. Don't you just love that rock yeah, yeah. traveling abroad? One minute left. <laughs> One minute. Type up, submit. <laughs> works out for you. We do. Uh, here, this tab has the actual answers. Whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's two uh, tabs here. I'm just okay? Yeah. Yeah. I might okay, look at it. How much time do we have? Five minutes? We have five minutes, so we're going to wrap up. So, maybe before we look at that, is there anything that like came up during the discussions that you couldn't put in, but like maybe... Thank you, you everyone, for it? your noise. <laughs> now it's time for silence again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, is there anything that you didn't think like you could put in here because it didn't fit, but it came up from the discussions uh, around research software metrics? Well, does anyone want to vocalize that point? 
Yes, yeah, just. I guess it wasn't metric specific, but we were looking at the context of how often underrepresented people, especially women, are left out of the footnotes of scientific academic research work. So we were brainstorming a little bit on how could we better represent smaller contributions to larger research projects, maybe doing things like automating or better representing uh, like in the footnotes or citations with automated acknowledgments to research work depending on what the software is like. That was something none of us had research or academic formal experience, so we were just kind of throwing ideas out. Yeah, so that was yeah. one that we were thinking about is better mm -hmm. representation for yeah. the smaller bite-sized tasks. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, so, I was saying in our group, I've been hearing about scientific software and metrics probably about five times in the last two days between sustain <laughs> and today. So clearly this is an issue that's <laughs> becoming increasingly important very quickly. Um, so thanks for doing this. Uh, a couple of the things that I have heard over the last couple of days, one was downstream dependencies, taking a look at your software and the, the number of pieces of software that depend on what you do. Another one that I heard was your software um, say as published in biology, the field of biology, and actually being also used in say ecology or geology that is outside of your own field, so having a translational impact. Um, we also came up with um, forks, so taking a look at the number of people who are actually um, working your work. Oh, yeah, contributing. So um, scientific software projects, they can oftentimes have very small contributor bases, so even just kind of incremental improvements in the number of contributors can be a, a great sign. So these are the things we've been hearing. Okay, thank you. Someone else? Just a question of reproducibility. Yeah. The issue of reproducibility mm -hmm. of research. So when you have uh, papers that are published and information sent to blind <coughs> uh, <coughs> reviewers and they, go, they don't get to see how you did what you did, so how do you do that? reproducibility of the software that is being used. So by, by reproducibility we mean that with the same input, with the same software, with the same settings, we get the, we can actually get the same result, yeah? Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> we're, I think we're slowly getting there. It's improving, yeah? So it, it is a it's still a challenge. One of the things is that can you actually rerun the software? So uh, I know it might seem strange, but uh, in, in the scientific world very often you can't even rerun the software like yeah that has been used. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's improving that also because the skills of the researchers who develop software are improving. Uh, yeah. So one of the biggest, I think, that for me, it's the, the, in, in the context of quality of science is the most important part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have like Good. One Thirty minute. seconds to say thank seconds. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, I just want to say I could have made this an hour or two workshop and this would have been really good fun. Um, if this is a topic that does interest you, this is us. Uh, and please contact us or speak to us afterwards um, and we will hook up because we can talk about, talk about this more and about um, steps that we are taking to improve things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making it a little bit more interactive. <laughs>